So all the way back in January, uh, as a part of one of my first uh, fully remote classes, I was planning on teaching Syngan, um, which is a model that does some really interesting stuff that we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, I never really got around to it, um, and now it's August, and I'm finally sitting down to record this video. Um, so this will just, I think I might break this up into a couple pieces. Um, we will first, we'll just talk about what Syngan is and how to use it. Um, and then I've got a collab notebook and I'll walk through sort of how to train on it, um, how to generate some images and maybe some video. Um, I might get to some of the in-painting stuff they do. Um, I don't know, it's not really my vibe, but if you're interested in it, I might do more of it. Um, so Syngan, I believe it came out, uh, it looks like the end of 2019. Um, what's really interesting about this model and I think is really helpful to understand, especially if you've already like done a bunch of training on other stuff. Um, this works with a single image, which is like very, very helpful, right? Like most of what uh, we do is we have to gather thousands upon thousands of images. Um, with this, you can make some pretty interesting things using just one, um, just one image. Um, so you'll see here, like this is the paper, which I'll link to um, in the video notes, but uh, you'll see here that like, it learns sort of the representation of a single image and then using some like noise and other things is able to generate multiple different versions of the same image, you know, sort of messing with the global structure of things. So in this case, you'll see the mountains here are now, uh, there's many mountains in this one. There's like less mountain in this one, this one that sort of like shifts the perspective around. Um, I liken this to a little bit like the content aware fill um, or the content aware tools within uh, Photoshop. Um, and that, you know, again, you're not getting a brand new image, but you're sort of able to manipulate and create different views of this. So I can already see that maybe there's some opportunity here to uh, use this to sort of pad your data set or something, right? Maybe you want to um, use StyleGAN and you want to generate multiple like mountain ranges, but you, for whatever reason, you only have um, like 500 images and you want to pad it out a little bit. You could do something like this to sort of like train and, and add additional um, imagery. Um, maybe for like gaming, this is really important. And you like also want to generate different backgrounds, that sort of thing, but you want to keep them all sort of feeling the same. Um, so this is an interesting paper. Uh, we'll talk about some of the limitations in a minute. There are some, um, but I, I definitely recommend reading the paper. They basically have made like a Swiss army knife sort of tool that uses one image. Um, so in addition to sort of creating new images and random samples from a single image, they also generate some other tools, which are these sort of editing features. So you're able to, um, maybe say stretch or manipulate, uh, certain images, um, Harmonization, like in painting, this is a very common thing that you'll see people want to do is you want to take a graphic of some kind, so in this case, a Christmas tree and place it in this image and have the stylization. This is essentially like a style transfer with some masking um, to do that. They also have this paint image. So sort of see, they took like all of the popular like image editing tools and brought it into one tool and one tool that only needs to be trained on a single image. So it's pretty interesting. Um, there's definitely like lots of possibilities you could see grow with this. Uh, they also have a super resolution model um, and then an animation uh, setup as well. So I definitely recommend digging through this. Um, another reason why I sort of like this model is they also created um, a list of uh, sort of supplemental materials and here are their failure cases. Um, and you know I like some freaky faces so here are some very freaky looking faces. Um, one thing to note with this is it does really work best with some more abstract or more natural looking imagery, right? So if you are trying to train on a face and you want to maybe hopefully get different nose shapes, um, the chances of getting a different nose shape are pretty rare. You'll need to use sort of what they call the the finer scales here, which is the N, N, N minus one sort of scale um, to get minor modification differences. Whereas at this, I believe this is N zero, um, you end up getting like these really, really wild sort of like completely structureless um, creepy looking images. So, uh, that's cool, but also like, uh, you know, depending on what you want out of this, you might not be able to get what you need. So faces are tricky with this thing, but again, you'll see sort of in that previous model that, um, you know, images like, uh, these balloons or, um, you know, these more sort of texture based, what I would describe as like texture based images. And this is true of, um, like content aware fill too, right? Like the content aware fill, um, does well with images like this, but if you were to try to um, replicate people's faces, it would, it would definitely struggle as well because it doesn't have a sense of global structure. Um, yeah, so that is Syngan. Um, a couple of the limitations that I've found, um, and we'll get into this when we start to look at the actual um, image generation, is that, you know, it's one image, 
um, but training on that one image takes a long time, um, especially if you want a really, really nice quality or higher resolution. Um, in some cases, it takes up to like a day to train. So, you know, now you're now you're sort of talking like, is it worth doing this in Photoshop? Is it worth, um, you know, using this sort of tool? Um, I can't really say for sure, but I do think that it's like a strong limitation of um, this material. Uh, maybe a couple months ago, there was a new Syngan sort of similar idea, but it was it was done a little bit differently. It's called Kun Syngan. I again don't like don't know where the cosine or sin sign comes from, but um, I know it's single image in this case. But they tried to sort of replicate some things and make it run a little bit faster. I personally found that one didn't give as good of results but it did train faster. So again, these sort of like lots of trade-offs with these sort of models. Um, so there's some other examples here that you'll see that I think are pretty good. Um, here again, uh, there's this concept of scales. So N equals N, um, you tend to get these very like wonky sort of like, this is where you get like weird graphics, right? Whereas N minus one or, or sorry, N one and N two, um, this is more to get like fine grain control. So maybe you don't like the zebra stripes on this animal and you want to mess with them a little bit and get slightly different material, right? So you'll see these stripes. So it's like, this is like the global structure is a little bit more maintained, but inside of these textures, you get um, some different examples. And here's another example of these various scales that you have. And here's some examples of, you know, just sort of how these different tools um, can paint, uh, you know, using this input shape. So um, lots to explore with this tool. Um, in the next video, I will cover just the, the basics of a YouTube. A YouTube, sorry, I just saw this link. Uh, the basics of a collab notebook that'll just be about image generation, maybe some animation generation. I won't go as much on the harmonization tools, um, but if you are interested in that, I'll record a second video to do that. Um, cool. So that's it for Syngan. Um, again, look, keep an eye out for that second part on, uh, with a color notebook. Thanks.